Hello there guys, it's me and Stable Voltage. Welcome back to episode 5 of Europa Universalis 4 as Connaught attempting the Irish Exodus with the new random new world in the Cossacks. England have actually uh, managed to peace out France, so we're still at war with Scotland, but they're at 100% war score, so I'm very much expecting that to end very, very soon, and there it goes. Um... So, due to our invaluable assistance in their wars, England now owes us seven favours. We will make good use of them. So, this is one of the reasons why you do want to go to war with people, because favours become useful. So, England has accepted peace from Scotland on the following terms. Scotland will cede Lothian, Fife and Aberdeenshire to England, which is these three provinces here. Uh, and Scotland will be forced to give uh, war reparations... This will last for 10 years. Scotland will annul all treaties with France. Scotland will pay 147 ducats to England and its allies, of which Connaught, that's us, will gain 11 of this amount. And that will give us, yay, more inflation. Uh, Conquest CB, England suffers um, some aggressive expansion, blah, blah, blah. Total of 12.7 prestige divided amongst England and its allies, of which we get 0.9. Now, when they pieced France out, I incorrectly said they declared an OCB war. Uh, that's not true. They used their CB to declare war against Scotland. It's just they took land without a CB on it. Uh, but they did have a CB to uh, to declare the war. So let's get our guys um, back to Connaught. So they're black flagged. We can move through Scotland. That is fine. Uh, improve relations with Scotland or incorporate Munster into our country. Now then, we could do that, but there isn't a lot of use for doing it. Either of these missions will give us diplomatic reputation. So let's go ahead and improve our relations with Scotland. Um, we're no longer... We are rival to them? Apparently we are rival to them. Apparently we want to try and improve diplomatic relations with them. See if we can do it. Might be, uh, might be possible. What are improved relations at? 59... Was at war, but that will go down. Do have hostile relations. Let's go ahead and improve our relations with them. We might be able to do it. We might not. I don't really care. Um, they've actually rivaled me now, so that's not going to happen. So let's instantly go ahead and cancel that mission. <laughs> uh, we'll cancel that because we can't do it. We'll have to take the other one. So we might as well stop sucking up to them because there isn't really an awful lot of point. Um, we can afford a new technology. It's military tech. Let's go ahead and grab it. We are ahead of time on military tech. We also get a new type of um, unit. Let's go ahead and grab our men-at-arms. Make our army a little bit better. Disputed succession. Burgundy with minus six prestige. Should we try and claim the throne of Burgundy? I don't think that's a terribly good idea. Well, Scotland are quite weak now. Scotland are down to three provinces. Um... Apparently Leinster does have a claim there on Ayrshire. So does England. Um, England has a claim on everything apart from the Western Isles. Again, I don't really see there's a lot of point in doing anything over here. We're, we're literally just trying to stay alive long enough in order to be able to go and um, colonise the New World. That's the plan here anyway. So we don't really want to have to mess around too much. England are a little bit stronger than they were. Certainly once we get to the New World, assuming we manage to do it, we can actually um, come back and try and cause some trouble in Europe. But let's concentrate on getting to the New World first. I think, especially as we've set it on the random New World and it will have the fantasy aspect, the fact that we may run into some very strong nations over there could make things really interesting for us. So we need to grab the next admin idea group. We need 573 power. Um, because we are getting a slight reduction from uh, neighbour bonus and it's currently estimating that'll be done in July of 64 so it's only looking at three years away so in three more years we should be able to um, tech up there we also of course want to make sure that we um, increase our colonial range um, which is at level 7 115 I think uh, level 7 is what you normally need um, as Connor to reach the new world if you are using the normal new world. So if you're playing on the historical new world, you normally need the range given to you by tech level 7 to reach it. Or, I think you can do it less than that if you um, leapfrog using um, Iceland here. You can actually grab parts of uh, parts of Iceland and get there a little bit quicker. 
But we'll see what happens anyway. Uh, let's go up to game speed 4, because we haven't really got anything going on at the moment. Now, if we actually go ahead and look on England and actually look at their um, diplomatic feedback, you can now see we have 11 favours with England. England owes us 11 favours. As we are allied to them, uh, we will gain favour every four years. The amount of years needed to gain favour depends on the relative strength of our country to theirs. Favours is a measure of how much England owes us for good deeds we have done them in the past, such as helping them in wars and giving them territory that we want in our own wars. It can be spent to increase their trust towards us, asking them to prepare for war with another country, or call them into a war where we are not promising them any territorial gain. So we've got these options now where we can actually say to England, right, first of all, their trust is at 50, which is pretty standard. They're willing to trust us somewhat. We can actually spend 10 of our favours to increase the trust. There isn't really a lot of point doing that. But we can also spend 10 favours to get them to prepare to war. They'll avoid starting any wars of their own for 12 months and will be more likely to join offensive calls coming from us during that time. Now, I'm not too sure if this has changed much from when um, they first sort of introduced it in... Uh, the Cossacks, but I believe the way uh, it could just be that it's not listed in the tooltip. But the way I understood it was not only does it stop them from starting their own wars and makes them more likely to help you in yours, but it also gets them to set their maintenance to full and gets them to build up to their force limit if they can as well. So that's very, very useful. But if you try and declare war on somebody, you can actually use favors to say, Look, you owe me a favor, come and fight for me in this war. That's the idea of it. If we actually go and look at our own country here, um, I doubt that we can see... Yeah, we can't actually see what favours we owe other people. Okay, so what do we have here? We can either gain two papal influence for plus one reform desire, or the papal state's influence can be changed by minus 20. Well, we'll just take the papal influence. We're not bothered about reform des desire. I think we might have a few more options for religion later on. We've still got this option to incorporate Munster into our country. We could go ahead and do that. Um, I actually don't want to. I'm going to go ahead and take the mission and instantly cancel it. And the reason I don't want to do it, there's two reasons I don't want to do it. First of all, it's going to cost us diplomatic power, which we're supposed to be trying to save. Um, there's England giving us subsidies. I'm wondering if subsidies gives favours. That's what I'm was trying to work out why are england constantly giving me subsidies are we gaining are they gaining favors with me if i was to go ahead and um can i give them subsidies so i don't have the option for subsidies what if i was to give munster subsidies yeah give subsidies um improves opinion Okay, but it doesn't doesn't say that it improves um, favours any. Okay, that's uh, that's quite a strange thing. Anyway, back to Munster and the reason why I'm not going to try and integrate them. First of all, I still think they're stronger as an independent nation than taking a province from them. Uh, secondly, I don't want to spend any of our Diplo power because we are basically trying to save that in order to um, get the idea groups that we need in order to try and find the new world and plus of which thirdly if we do get to the new world i'm only going to have to release them again anyway because you can only move your capital if you're down to your last province in your in your home uh, uh, home region speaking of regions gonna have a look at the new map mode if we go and have a look at the uh where are we is it the geographical map modes and we can actually look at areas so we can see that um all this is counted as island we can see we've got the Highlands, the Lowlands, Northumbria, Mercia. So this is a little bit more similar to the duchies that you would see if you were playing um, Crusader Kings 2. Not quite. I mean, obviously, Ireland is a kingdom, not a duchy. The Highlands and the Lowlands aren't duchies either. Mercia was a, uh, a duchy, or at least a petty kingdom, uh, as I think was East Anglia. So, the, again, we're talking at a later period in feudal time, so maybe they did change. Uh, Northumbria was a duchy. Um, and then you've also, as well as the areas, you've also got the uh, the regions... So you can see this is all classed as the, the British region. So just some interesting uh, new little buttons that they've added on there, which we don't ever really need to use. Let's get rid of that map mode. Uh, our truce with Munster has ended. Well, we don't intend to go to war with them, so that is fine. We can pick a new technology. That is going to be our Diplo tech. We are going to need to spend points to get our Diplo tech up. Remember this, we need to have the colonization uh, range. 
We do need to try and get up to level 7. We may be able to do it without level 7. It's possible that we can. Um, Diplo points is going to be the interesting one for us because we need to be able to afford to get the Explorer as well as being able to get the two ideas in the idea group. We're currently ahead of time, so we're getting some trade efficiency. Uh, what I might actually do... How much money are we making? 1.02. Um, not sure if that's possible to go ahead and get a Diplo advisor as well. Um, morale of navies. I think morale of navies actually... Does that increase the amount of trade power you get from them? Or is that only if you... No, I think that's only tradition. Um, better relations over time. Well, he's actually cheaper. He's cheaper even still. Well, they all cost the same monthly amount, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Their hiring price is based on age. The older they are, the cheaper they are to hire because they're more likely to die. Let's get the morale of navies guy. Now, we are going to be losing money here, so what we may do is get rid of the... Um, I love because these are Irish, they're all O-something. They've all got O in their name. Um... So, we can either get 15 local autonomy in Ulster and the nobility gains 5 loyalty. Well, we don't want to ever lose stability, so I guess we'll be gaining some more local autonomy and that's going to hurt our pockets even more. Um, how long is it going to be... Well, we're very close to getting the... Um, we're very close to getting the next admin tech, so let's go ahead and sack the admin guy. That should put us back up to a positive, um, positive income. It still won't take an awfully long time in order to be able to grab that, so that's fine. Let's just go ahead and keep improving relations with uh, Munster. Let's keep them topped off. We don't want them to have uh, any liberty, desire, or anything like that. So, any time now we should be able to grab the tech. In fact, there it is, so we're going to go and grab that right now. So, we're now ahead of time, and we have some... Um, Production efficiency, as well as our trade efficiency. Nobility estate loses 10 loyalty. Fantastic. So we can now pick our idea group. We're going to go ahead straight the way, and we're going to go and pick exploration ideas, because we want... that's the whole purpose of this playthrough. So we're already fairly close to getting Colonial Ventures, but say we need to be able to get Colonial Ventures and Quest for the New World. Each one of those is going to cost us 400 um, Diplo, and we also need um, 50 Diplo to hire uh, an Explorer. Is it 50 or is it 100? I can never remember. 50. So we, we basically need 850 Diplo in total uh, in order to be able to even start our exploration but i think that can be done that's not too much of a problem uh income's not too bad hopefully we're not really going to get called into any wars england have a truce with both france and scotland for a while uh england have now actually actually words england have now actually integrated leinster into their country but what if that means that, yeah leinster now loses its claims here because leinster doesn't exist um, Norway actually has a claim on the Highlands. Interesting. I guess this is Norwegian up here, isn't it? Uh, still no claim up there. Um, we do share a sea zone. We could actually, if we wanted to, fabricate a claim up here on the Western Isles. Again, I don't really see any point to it. We just want to start getting colonies over in the New World as fast as possible. I wonder if anyone's discovered anything over here yet. I doubt it. The only people who start off with the ability to do any sort of colonization is... Portugal. Portugal actually start the game with an explorer. Now, this does mean that they can do certain exploration missions, um, and they can do certain colonial missions. However, unless things have changed, and unless I'm misremembering, Portugal can only start searching. They, can, they only have the uh, missions to explore the waters around Africa and Asia. They still can't explore the New World unless they have the um, quest for the New World uh, quest for the New World idea. But they can they start actually start the very start of the game when they're still tech level three or four, whatever it is you start on tech level three, and they start with an explorer, so they can instantly go ahead and start colonizing uh, Africa. Gain some Navy tradition. That's quite nice. That should actually help with the income. I'm sure that, yeah, Naval tradition does increase your um, ship's ability to steer trade. So can we see much of Africa? Not really much beyond Morocco. Um, so you're just still um, controlled by Portugal. Anything interesting going on in the rest of the world? Um, 
let's have a look. Naples is still in a personal union with Aragon. Um, doesn't look like the Iberian wedding has fired off. What have we got going on over here? Byzantium is still around, which is interesting. It looks like Byzantium are actually winning some fights against the Ottomans. I'm not too sure how that is uh, happening. Uh, Albania still exists, which is also um, very strange. It's probably because they're allied with France. Uh, both Bosnia and Serbia still exist. Ragusa still exists. Croatia still exists. Well, not everywhere has been swallowed up yet. Anyway, Moldavia is still there. The Crimea is still there. So, as you can see, this is this is part of this... Um, oh, Scotland Games are clean on Ulster. Awesome. Uh, as you can see, this is another one of the changes in um, the Cossacks. If we zoom out, you can see that this area here says uh, Giannese Crimea. So, if we actually go ahead and look at the geographical map mode and look at the um, regions, you can see that this is the Crimea region. But because this is... Uh, this area is owned by uh, Genoa. It become it doesn't say Genoa. It says Genese Crimea. So if we were to go and capture this, it would say Connacht Crimea. Or uh, if we formed Ireland, it would say Irish Crimea. Or if England took it, it would say English Crimea. So that's one of the changes that they've actually gone and added um, in Cossacks. Not all that uh, important and useful. There is an option for that in the main menu of the game um, before you start. Oh, there. Denmark's declared war in England. Um, if you actually go... There's basically an option that says um, exclaves use region names. So if I was to go and... Um, let's look at another one, for example. Let's say I'm playing Ireland because I'm not too sure what the plural is for Connor. But let's say we're playing Ireland and we were to grab some territory down here enough of it you'd have to grab a significant amount of it but it would say irish france if we grabbed a load of territory down here it would say irish iberia so it's quite an interesting little thing so how are we doing in terms of our diplo power not amazingly well we're still only at 303 we are getting another uh, six every month our ruler is a 223 Um, he is 47, so he may not be around too much longer. And our successor is a 312, which is not good. Uh, he does have, he only has one point less. We're looking at someone with six points as opposed to somebody with seven, but it's one point less in Diplo. We've got as much admin as we need. Bear in mind, the first couple of... Um, oh, is that war over already? Uh, the first couple of colonies that we start in the new world because it will be distant overseas we won't actually need to core them they'll be free to core but after we move our capital over there because it will be our home continent then we'll have to actually core any new colonies that we settle so we don't really need admin power yet we will need a fair bit of it later on but right now we're not doing too bad I always find it strange with the idea groups. Um, what do we have here? We can... Um, well, yeah, we always want to gain mercantilism. We don't want to lose it, so we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, Holy Roman Empire have elected another Austrian emperor. That's fine. What I was about to say was I've never understood how... If you take expansion ideas, you get you start off by getting a colonist. And you don't get the quest for the new world in expansion ideas. So expansion ideas is more useful if you're either on the new world or if you want to colonize things like Africa, Asia, Siberia. You're not bothered about actually expanding into the new world. So if you want to expand into the new world, you're specifically going to go for exploration ideas. Now, exploration ideas doesn't start with quest for the new world. It actually starts with a colonist. So you start with a, col a free colonist... But you still have to wait until you can explore the new world. I've never understood it being that way around. So we can either gain a temple in Ulster, or the current heir will die, and we'll get a new... Right, okay, so we can either get a temple in Ulster, which is a province we'll be giving away soon, or the heir will die, giving us a 3-4-1 with a weak claim. Um, we're going to go ahead and take the new heir. And we can actually give the um, heir our own name if we want to. Brian. Brian will be good. Let's go with Brian. That's a good, beautiful Irish name. Um, we'll go with Brian. And he does have a weak claim. But at least if he does take the throne, um, he will 
be a 3-4-1, which is significantly better than the um, 3-1-2, was it? 3-1-2? That the previous uh, uh, air was. So I'm, I'm happy with that overall. I've still got a couple of relationships that I am not using. I could potentially try and vassalize someone else, although most people are going to be a little bit too big for that to happen. So let's go ahead and grab Colonial Ventures so we can now have a colonist. Now this gives us the option to choose our native policy. And um, I think we want to take the one where we basically don't have any uprising. So we'll go ahead and take that. Now what does it cost to change it? This is what I wanted to find out because I couldn't remember. Um, so if we were to change it, um, it reduces stability. There we go. I knew you lost something by changing it, but I couldn't remember what the change was. We can grab a new tech. It's going to be military tech again. So we're now 100% ahead of time in military tech. Truce is expired with France. England has cancelled their subsidies. Our military leader has died. That's fine. We're not really at war. On our next military tech level, we gain artillery. Uh, we're not too worried about admin at the moment, so all we're trying to do right now is spend our diplo points on being able to explore the new world. Once we can do that, I don't want to start spending it on diplo tech first, because we're going to have to sort of work our way over to the new world, and because we're playing on a random new world, we don't know how far away they are. We might not need to improve our Diplotech much in order to be able to find it. So what we're going to do to start with is we are going to rush to try and get ourselves an explorer. We're going to get our explorer out there and start trying to find some land that we can settle. And remember, it only has to be part of the new world. It doesn't. If we find an island chain here, that counts, and we can start colonising that. So that's all we need to be able to do. Uh, we are losing money. That's mainly because England have cancelled their subsidies. Not an awful lot that I can do about that. What are we like in terms of our um, force limit? We're below the army force limit. and We're bang on our naval force limit. So there's not an awful lot that we can do there. It's probably that absent merchant thing that's, that's causing a few problems for us. Um, but I think that should be fine. I wonder if we could potentially try and vassalise Scotland... Clergy loses 5 loyalty, Papal State's Opinion minus 100, or 8 noble regiments revolt in Ulster, and the nobility still loses 5 loyalty, or the nobility loses 5 loyalty. Um, I guess we should deal with that. Um, it's always risky. I guess actually we'll just, I don't care about the Papal State's Opinion. No, we'll take that one. We don't need the rebels. I've got free diplomats. I can always go and just suck back up to the Pope. He's still only on minus 11 because of that event. Let's go and um, improve relations. Uh, one thing that I have just um, realised, and I've completely forgotten about this, is I never, um, never embargoed my rivals. I still have a truce with Scotland, so I can't embargo them anyway, but completely forgot to embargo my rivals. I don't think it makes a huge amount of difference, to be honest. Yes, it gives you a tiny bit of power projection, uh, but that's about it, really. It doesn't do an awful lot to help with anything. So even though we're losing money, we're only losing a tiny amount, I think we can afford to keep things going as it is for a while. Uh, we could even, if we wanted to, go and spend a bit of our excess admin points and bump our stability up. But again, I don't think I want to do that just yet. We just want to try and save up and find the new world. So we've certainly had a better start than the first attempt where we lost our entire army to Munster on the first video. Uh, yes, it has been a bit of a slow start. As I said, it was always going to be the problem because you can't really do much as a small nation anyway. And if you end up taking lots of land, you only end up getting rid of it. So there's not really a lot of point in doing it. The best thing to do is just take a little bit of land so you're a little bit stronger and you're not going to get instantly squished by your neighbours constantly. Um, try and ally with a neighbour who is fairly big and brutish to protect you and just basically try and stay alive until you can go and um, discover the new world. So thanks a lot for watching guys, I hope you're still enjoying this series, I'll see you on the next video and until then, goodbye for now.